Hello, here is uh, number five, number five of the Hotel Marvel. Uh, ouch, ah, what a bad start. I'm going to, I pressed uh, right now. Oh no, I, I pressed F12 and this time we're going to do Hotel uh, Financing. And I hope we're just about finished here. Okay. Um, the uh, once we have the project cash flow, let's begin with the financing. Now, uh, if you remember, we put a. You don't remember? I. You might have just uh, opened this. This one here. We have a uh, loan. We have a, a loan to value land uh, cost. So we're going to loan 80% of the land, pay it back after the project starts in 10 years. We're going to pay a credit spread on this. We're going to have for a construction loan 65% uh, of the land cost. And uh, we will uh, have a cash sweep percentage of uh, 70%. And, you know, here's what we're going to do at first. When we uh, structure these loans, uh, this, this loan to value will not include any interest uh, during the construction period. Okay. And uh, I think we had... So we had some uh, assumptions somewhere up here. I think I just uh, skipped over them. We had the interest rate. Okay. Why in the heck? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. And, you know, I, I, I don't think we need any of this stuff. We can uh, press shift alternate right arrow and then I thought we pressed number one. Okay, so now we can kind of see what we're doing. And for the financing schedule, let's start with the two debt issues. Land loan and then start with an opening balance we better add the draw which is going to be at the time we 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 uh, 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 spent money on the loan and then less the repayment scheduled now this is uh, and that's why don't we uh, I can't remember. Oh, we put it here. So this this scheduled repayment is uh, over uh, ten years, but we have uh, four quarters per year. So we do it over forty periods. Okay, and then we'll put a, a closing balance. Now, let's put an interest, let's put the LIBOR rate right in here. And, you know, that's, uh, let's put a periodic. Uh, remember, uh, you know, here's what I should have done. We need this periods per year. So here's, here's what we can do with this one. Select this, shift alternate left arrow takes it away, shift alternate right arrow, and then we can see the periods per year because we're going to have to divide the LIBOR rate by this number depending on what uh, quarter we're in. Okay. And then we'll put the uh, credit spread and get a total 
interest. Now this credit spread, if 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 you got really kind of, uh, it's not so fancy actually. You could put a different credit spread for a different uh, time period. Okay, and uh, whoops, that was the construction loan. Okay, I don't know how to protect against errors like that. Uh, perhaps make a uh, IRR on the loan, and it better be uh, somehow we better uh, see it then. And then we can get the uh, interest rate interest uh, expense now, and we can also get interest capitalized. Okay, so because we might have a uh, we might have uh, interest that's uh, during the construction period that's uh, not, uh, you know, okay, okay. And uh, I, I suppose, did we put any fees on this one? For some reason, I didn't bother to put any fees on this one. But I put, oh, I'll put the upfront fees and the commitment fees on both of these. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't want to. I'm going to have a circular reference with these uh, uh, on the construction loan with the uh, commitment fees. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to keep this model relatively simple. There are so many different. Uh, videos on uh, um, fees. If you want to watch one of those, watch one please. And maybe I'll make one of this later, but not, not right now. So now let's do the same thing for the construction loan. Now on the construction loan, let's first put the loan size. And what we we have is is two things. We have the 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 cost of the facility, and then we uh, then then we have the loan to value. Okay, and we put that assumption in. Okay, now. Once we have the these two, we can multiply that and get the loan size. And then we put the, uh, what we're going to do is uh, see how much equity commitment has to go in and uh, subtract the debt commitment. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to make this pari passu. Pari passu, a Latin word, not a French word. Uh, let's put opening balance, and then we'll add the uh, construction, the draws, which will be the 65% of the total. And then we can put less the uh, repayment from the uh, uh, cash sweep because that's what we put. Now this is, we should also here, I missed one, I put less repayment of balance at exit. Now this, this is what I want to show you. This one is going to come from downstairs. This one is going to come from downstairs. We don't know how much uh, we have to pay. And then closing balance, we can uh, then, I think I'm um, inserting one shift space bar, shift control plus, and we put interest, periodic LIBOR rate, uh, and then credit spread, and finally the total interest rate, and interest expense, and interest. OK. 
okay that's that's what we need to do now so so put it put all of these now uh what i did is something extremely simple we we uh to get the amount of the draws we actually need a uh we can call this almost a sources and uses which is like a financing during construction now what we start is with the asset side so uses just like if it was a balance sheet that would be the assets and we can put development cost and then we can put land cost and we can put construction cost and then we put total that's pretty simple okay it's very simple because we've already done it all that we did up here remember uh, here's the development cost the land cost and the construction expenditures we did the hard part on that one already and then we put the sources our funds and let's uh, put when we go to the sources of funds let's put first the um, uh, <coughs> I'm just got to sit up here let's put the uh, land loan and that's going to be 70 uh, uh, whatever the 80 percent of our our land cost and then we can put below the land cost let's put the con uh, construction loan okay and we said well that's going to be uh, uh, 65 percent of uh, construction so what we do here is just put multiply this by the land cost multiply this one by the construction cost and we'll have total uh, sources now here's the here's the real problem uh, under this one of the other uses of cons will be the uh, interest during construction now what that will mean I'll just tell you right now uh, this 80 percent is 80 percent only of these numbers we have to finance the interest during construction by equ equity essentially so it's a little bit uh, I don't know if you want to call it simplistic or distorted but but let's just uh, get these in okay so we have sources of funds uses of funds we put the construction loan in and all of that okay um the uh once we now once we have all of these things built uh the next thing we can do is finally you know the biggest mistake here would be to put this too early profit and loss we almost don't need this the only thing we need to do is 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 put a tax rate in here which we have up uh, here somewhere well I'm just gonna it it's theoretically of course possible to make the tax rate change over time sometimes some projects I think uh, in Singapore for example there's kind of a five-year some kind of rule that you you uh, if you sell it before five years you you're trading you're you're speculating and you get a lower capital gains tax if you sell it after five years like zero perhaps so where we put general economic assumptions and then we put the financing and the tax rate so we'll put that in and then uh, we'll put the revenues less the the operating cost and then we can put uh, cash income how's that and then we can put less the uh, depreciation and we can call that ebit and then we can put less the interest on the land loan less 
the interest on the uh, not the land loan, the uh, construction loan. And then after we do that, we'll put EBT. And then we can put less uh, taxes. And we could put earnings. E. See the E's? This, should, this could be called EBITDA. That's what I would do. EBIT earnings. Okay, not very complicated. Only calculation in this whole thing is simply the taxes. Okay, and finally then we can put cash flow. Notice what I'm doing is I'm uh, putting the cash flow in here before we make any calculations. And we can start with the EBIT DA. This cash flow I'm going to just make over the operating period. Less taxes. How about we'll add uh, exit uh, proceeds. And then, then we'll put uh, uh, operating cash flow. Now, uh, then we can put less interest on the land loan, less uh, interest on the on the, the construction loan. Now it could be that the land loan is se senior to the construction loan, and then you would have to make a subtotal potentially. And we can put cash. Oops, why did that happen? Cash flow after interest. And then why don't we put less scheduled repayment, scheduled repayment on land loan. Remember that's from above. And we can make a sub cash flow after land loan repayment. Now it's possible that we have to then a, a repayment of uh, land loan balance at exit. Now then we can put cash flow after land loan repayment. Okay. Uh, repayment at exit, and then we can put less cat uh, repayment of construction loan. Now, how did I uh, make the repayment? We said that is going to be. Um, uh, uh, we said, well, we'll just sweep 70%. Now, it's totally possible, I suppose, that we still have some loan left over. And so let's put cash flow after repayment. And we better sh less repayment of, uh, of uh, construction loan at exit and then we can finally put dividends now this sounds like it's 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 going to be really hard but it's really not so so this uh, repayment of construction loan is going to be driven by the 70% and I think we really have everything done. And finally, we can have net cash flows. And we can have equity uh, cash flow and then equity IRR. And I'm going to stop here. We could put debt IRRs too and all of that. But I think that's just about enough. Okay. And it sounds like, oh, no, this is going to be so hard. But it's not. Let's start just by linking. A lot of this is just going to be a 
simple link of various uh, things. So we put the construction cost, then we put the land loan uh, cost, the, the land expenditures rather, then we put the construction expenditures. Okay, uh, you know, I'm going to multiply this by one to and then the interest during construction that's a little bit tricky it could even lead to a uh, a circular reference but let's take these two and then uh, uh, get our interest cap capitalized down here okay shift control one and then uh, alternate equal to some of these. Okay, and then we can take our land loan, which is at F4 because it's over here, multiplied by simply the land cost. That's not so hard, is it? As long as I get it in the right place. And then we take the construction loan and we multiply that by the construction cost. Shift Control One, and then we can press Alt e Alt equal again. Okay, opening balance. Only one thing to remember: it always equals the prior year closing balance. Never do this; you'll get a circular reference. Always go to the prior year. Okay. All right. That's the lesson number one in financial modeling. Then we can put our land loan draws now. This scheduled repayment at exit comes from down here in the cash flow statement. This, this, this to me looks like 206. That's the key. Somewhere in these schedules, there'll be some kind of uh, um, plus the draws minus. The, oops. What did I just do? This is at exit. Excuse me. Now this this uh, total land loan. <sighs> I suppose we can do something. Uh, I'll do it like this. If we sum up all of the draws, we can we can get how much we're going to have to repay, and then we better take this total amount divided by this amount and multiply it by the we don't start repaying until we have the operating uh, 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 section so we needed that again now the I LIBOR if you remember okay first we're going to have to open our uh, little thing I guess it went it took us to the wrong place. That's too bad. I didn't kind of realize it would do that. If we type lookup, okay. Okay, and put the, I still remember this nice young man who told me to look use lookup. And of course, I did it wrong. You just, you just look up one value, and then we find our interest cost and we click on the year and then we click on the entire column okay if you're watching this it must be incredibly boring uh, uh, now shift I press shift control P and we'll divide that by how many periods per year we have okay and our credit spread is just flat and then we can press alternate equal okay I was going to try to say something a little more profound. On the, uh, this one, multiply it by the opening balance, not the closing balance. And then if it's capitalized, we take our total interest and we multiply that by the uh, construction period. That's when we capitalize the interest. Now the interest expense, hmm, this should be interest cost. So this should be this minus the capitalized interest, I suppose. Oh, we can't do that. Uh, let's just multiply that by the operating periods then. 
I'm not gonna let it get to me. Is this the up? Oops. Okay, I did it. Let's close this so we can see what's going on. Now the loan size here is 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 a little bit co more complicated. It's not really actually. Uh, the way I'm doing this, it, we're, we're making it relatively uh, simple. We can get this a little a lot more complex. Unfortunately, Shift Control O. Uh, uh, we can put the opening balance equals the closing balance. And 174 it looks like. Now the debt draws. Whoops. The debt draws. The opening balance equals the closing balance. Okay. Debt draws. We could put that here, but this is 75% of the uh, construction loan. And uh, not the construction loan. The... Uh, I'm sorry, we already did this. We already have the construction loan. Excuse me for that. And then the repayment from the cash sweep, that again, that's the key here. That repayment from the cash flow sweep comes from down here. Now uh, we need to add one more line down here. Less uh, repayment at exit. Okay, now the reason we're getting that from downstairs, it is totally possible that you have a, you know, no, it is slightly possible, how about that, um, that, and always take it from the same column, always, 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 it is possible that the cap rate and everything's so bad when you exit, you have no cash flow. So we take the opening balance plus the that draws minus these minus this. I can't remember doing this up here. We must have done that. I was right. I'm not going quite. I thought I was going Sino, but I probably am. But uh, uh, I remember I didn't do that one. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, and then we can get the LIBOR rate, which was kind of a pain to get, remember. And then we can get the credit spread, which, of course, I did uh, incorrectly because we should have divided that by four and put it in periodic uh, uh, periods. And the credit spread for our, uh, our, our construction loan is presumably a tiny little bit more risky, so we take this one. I didn't have to do that, but uh, uh, so let's take this one, F4. I hope I pressed F4. I did do that. And then we uh, press alternate equal, and we can get the interest expense, which is the total rate multiplied by the opening balance multiplied by the operating uh, periods here that's and then we can take do the same thing and multiply it by the uh, construction period okay and uh, we have that finished tax rate we'll just uh, press f4 okay revenues now go up and get the revenues uh, and we get them from him Okay, and then we can get the operating cost. Um, uh, from here, and we get the EBITDA as the difference. Okay, and the depreciation now, ah, uh, this is a big issue that we have. I'm going to call this the base depreciation. And we also put less the depreciation on the capitalized interest. Now, okay, and I think we need another little section here. This is always a, kind of a little problem. We put depreciation 
on IDC or capitalized interest. Now this is just like we had before. We put an opening balance uh, uh, I, uh, uh, interest and then we can put opening balance let's add the interest oh come on capitalized on the, the land loan add the interest capitalized on the construction loan and put a closing balance now then we can put our depreciation rate uh, right and finally let's um, put the uh, 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 depreciation expense no let's just put the depreciation expense and I'll let's put accumulated and then finally uh, underneath the accumulated depreciation the net plant balance okay so we need uh, this one and let's just take this depreciation from here is that 189 now I think I might as well well do this the opening balance equals the closing balance the depreciation on the land loan at uh, depreciation the interest on capitalized on the land loan is here interest capitalized on the other one is here, alternate equal to add them up, shift control down, shift control one, depreciation rate. Uh, hopefully, we can just get from uh, the depreciation rate we did here. Here, remember, we take the uh, we can take the opening balance, multiply it by this, and we don't begin it until we have the operating switch. And so our accumulated depreciation is last year plus this year. Net plant balance is the closing balance minus the accumulated depreciation. And we have to adjust this one and put minimum of this number or the opening, the plant balance from the prior year. That I did a little bit quickly maybe, but... That, there we go. And then the depreciation on the capitalized interest. Did I just get that? I didn't get this yet. 180, 189. This depreciation is from up here. So we have the two parts of the depreciation, which means our EBT is this one. Now, uh, again, I told you that when I was an accountant in 1982, I had this accounting boss who told me the rule of lines and got really mad if I, I didn't use the correct lines and subtotals. I have no idea if I'm doing it correctly now, but I like to show the subtotals because uh, that's the only real calculation you have to make. And then we can get the interest expense from the land loan okay uh, there and then we can get the interest expense from the construction loan okay and then we can make another subtotal this one minus this one minus this one okay uh, oh i think i could have just done that oops and uh, put another subtotal and then we can the reason i put the tax rate up here is that's the only calculation now we could have net operating losses and get complex with the tax calculation there are all sorts of really interesting issues with the tax calculation and uh, we can uh, do this okay 
and now we get the edit dot from our, our uh, line above we get the taxes just from here and the exit proceeds I don't know if you remember that but we had to make that uh, calculation up here with the uh, I forgot how we did oh the cap rate I think and then we have a subtotal which is this minus this plus this okay and uh, we click on this but this time again it's not quite a uh, final total and then we can already take the interest we computed on the, the loans okay and finally we can get the cash flow after the interest whoops okay which is this one minus this one minus this one okay and we we uh, put this in here and then uh oh Oh, no. okay. And then we can now go back up and get our scheduled debt repayment from the the land loan. Okay, that doesn't begin till afterwards. And then we can get our cash flow after this, which will be another subtotal. Oh, I didn't realize I could do that. And then we can get the cash flow at exit, which is either this cash flow we well we never want to let's type the easy part we never want to pay more than the opening balance but if we don't have any cash flow that's too bad for those poor bankers so we take the minimum of this or this i suppose it's theoretically if this was negative we could also cap it at zero which means we should put a maximum and a minimum okay that's kind of the maximum and minimum rule. And then we take another one and press, and we have another subtotal. Did I press that? And then the repayment of the construction loan, okay, is this cash flow sweep, which means we take the maximum minimum of how much cash we have, but we multiply that one by... 70 percent but we never pay off more than the balance of the loan and you always use the opening balance so that's the only real trick and then you have another subtotal well i guess the other trick is a subtotal and then we can take the construction loan at exit we'll again see if we need it so we see how much this now I, I made a mistake here this is the minimum of the opening balance minus the amount we've already taken in the cash flow sweep or this and we need to do the same thing for the last one so this let's put this uh, as a double underline okay Huh. And uh, so we, we, we kind of have everything. There's one uh, thing. Where's the land loan at exit? This one. This, no, this, this, this one. So this is the minimum of this one. We should take out how much we've already paid from the minimum. Oops. Did I do that right? Okay, I hope I did that. Okay, and then we can get our equity cash flows, which is the positive cash flow, but we should subtract this key thing up here, which is how much we've put into the company. And that we need to do... Oh, how could I have done that? Okay, it's good. I kind of left that out, maybe. I'm pretending that I wanted to. Okay, and then we put uh, uh, equity funding. This is how much. We, and we take uh, the total amount we have minus the amount we've put into the project. And this better be uh, an alternate equal. Okay. And we can uh, 
put the total fundings oops uh, we, we and then we put put this one here, okay and I don't believe so so our total equity cash flow is the dividends we get minus the amount we put into the project which is the equity funding here that's the amount you take out of your project and then we'll compute the IRR over here and then we'll be finished and the only thing we have left to do really now is to go up here shift uh, down okay now and we press shift control R and look at this oh it did work Phew. okay so now we can let's just kind of look at our cash flow statement a bit this so far we have nothing we're just taking out and then as soon as we begin begin the project here's how much we have and oh no we had a negative tax okay so what for now uh, so what for now um, and then here's our interest and our repayment and uh, now the I made a mistake because we have less repayment cash flow after the repayment and this should have been the minimum of oh I didn't multiply this Ugh. is that did I really not do that okay I didn't I can pretend that I didn't uh, do that at, at, but this of course would have to be multiplied by the exit period and uh, this would have to be multiplied by the exit period okay and shift control R okay so now we have some positive cash flow um, cash flow yes now we don't have any uh, money coming out of the land loan until the exit and it looks like uh, scheduled repayment on the land loan I did wrong because we have some interest on the land loan which is totally fine because I made another mistake uh, because I didn't use the minimum function but uh, we're, we're kind of getting there and then so on both of these not on the, this but on this this uh, land loan when we have a scheduled repayment we would never ever pay off more than the amount we have at the beginning which is here shift control R so what we should really do is check this is our, our loan is going down and it better never get negative this construction loan is going down and it gets fully paid off and the rest is the uh, equity cash flow and uh, where did I put the uh, I put it right in the beginning and if you remember what we used is XIRR and we clicked I suppose uh, this line first and then we uh, after we click that line uh, we I lost the uh, thing so just a minute we have to put our opening and beginning and uh, ending period oh come on come on uh, let's XIRR and let's uh, try this one and then put the uh, these on okay so that then we get shift control P and there's our hotel uh, uh, financing 
and uh, you know here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna save it not as hotel financing hotel summary which is our next uh, sheet so you if you want to work on this you have to go out and do it yourself now I might uh, leave the titles in here for you and uh, make a nice little exercise that you could uh, attempt uh, to follow but uh, I think that's enough that's enough for this one so this is uh, exercise number five that took 45 minutes oh my gosh <laughs>